Hey guys, we are back. Welcome to another episode of Tarot Talks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are going to cover the Hierophant and the Emperor um, because this is, if you followed the last episode, this is the male aspect. Um, this is the sacred masculine, the two parts of the sacred masculine. So the Hierophant is the feminine aspect of the sacred masculine. It's broken into two parts. Um, and this is all about the God self and the material self. As we looked at the high priestess and the empress, um, we are looking at the uh, hierophant, which is the pope and the high priestess in some cards, in some decks will be called the papis. Um, so we have the pope and then we have the king. Um, so we also have to think about the, the church and state how that works, um, even in the Empress, um, how the church and state work together. It That's what holds together our laws in our world is the church and the state. So it's the spiritual and the, the spirit, the spiritual laws and the actual laws of the land that hold our realms together. So there's references to that as well. Um, what I didn't go over, um, one thing that I forgot that was interesting in the high priestess card, is the reference to the fifth chakra, which would be her robe and um, the, co the color blue is the color of the fifth chakra that rules the throat. And both of the Pappas and the Hierophant or the High Priest and the Hierophant very much have to do with truth and speaking the truth. No matter um, what the consequence may be, the truth and speaking the truth, this is just a reference to show her blue robe, um, is always the most important path. And speaking your truth, no matter what it takes, um, will always bring you closer to your divine self. So the Pope is related to the fifth chakra because not only of the number five, um, but it's also ruled by Taurus. Taurus rules the throat. And we also, again, the sign of benediction shows up. So if you follow the series, we talked about the sign of benediction in uh, when I covered the Ten of Swords. And what I these are the only two cards that have the sign of benediction in them. Here we go with the hand, say it. Um, and what I find interesting is that the sign of benediction, it the, the etymology of the word means to speak well. And... Um, for this card, this means to speak the truth and to lead your flock in truth. Um, and also the 10 of swords is a card that has to do with slander and backstabbing. So I think that's an interesting sign, but it also is, um, used at the end of Catholic masses to invoke the spirit of God. And, um, I think in the 10 of swords, you're invoking the spirit of God so you can recover from whatever loss that you have survived because the Ten of Swords brings you to the antithesis of your troubles and you're, you know, really beat down by it and you have to invoke the Spirit of God to recover and keep going. But it also, um, there is those, those notions of speaking well and maybe having spe people speak well of you or no longer speaking um, ill of other people. But... Um, so there's that, that fifth chakra reference there. Um, and so this is actually my spirit card in the tarot. If you add down your birthday, um, your say, say you're like two seventeen nineteen seventy two. 1972, you're going to add all of those numbers together and you're going to add it all down until you get one number. And, um, my number is five. So I have very big connections to the number five. I've always said, that I live in the fifth dimension. Um, and I'm a singer and um, I'm also a Taurus. So it's it's really, it's that the fifth chakra actually rules my experience here on earth because um, speaking the truth is very important to me and um, my musical talents are very important to me and help me survive some of the uh, more traumatic times in my life. Um, but there's a lot of other symbolism I want to go over here. Um, we have, let's see, like I said, I have to look at my notes, so just be patient with me. Um, so we went over the sign of um, benediction, but one another really cool thing is, um, so we're looking at the fingers that are up 
in this. And we have to look at palmistry. Nothing is missed in the symbolism in this shit here. It's, it's so crazy. So we have the thumb, which is Venus. We have the index finger, which is Jupiter. And we have the middle finger, which is Saturn. So Jupiter is always the prince. Um, Venus is the divine feminine. And Saturn is always the divine ruler, the king. Um, I haven't figured out myself what the fuck is going on with Saturn, yet there's a lot going on with Saturn. Um, Saturn in um, the Electric Universe, if you ever look at that series, it's scientists and people who know their shit. This isn't like New Age jargon. They will tell you that Saturn used to be our sun. Um, and in... Um, and the sun is always a masculine force. But in Kabbalah, Saturn is the great mother. So I have, and it's also the dark mother. I have not wrapped my head around what the fuck is going on with Saturn yet. I feel like I need to kind of level up my consciousness to be able to wrap my head around it at some point in my life. But I just wanted to put that out there. So we have, you know, the, the palmistry aspect, okay? Now we have the triple crown, which is the triregnum. Um, it's represents the triple power of the Pope, the father, the princes of Kings, the Prince of Kings. I'm sorry, Pope, the father of princes and Kings, the rector of the world and the vicar of Christ. So the vicar of Christ would be the speaker for Christ and the rector of the world is the ruler of the world. And if he's the father of princes and Kings, they're telling you that spirit is the ruler and the spiritual law is the law. Um, there's another thing that you may want to look at called natural law. And that is spiritual law. That's personal sovereignty and your freedom as a divine spirit and a soul in this earth. But I feel like in the macrocosm, it gets, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. But in the microcosm on our earth, it kind of gets perverted because now we're talking about um, how the church is a higher authority than the law. So you, you know who actually rules shit. Um, and the popes are always sovereign. And this is why um, the Vatican is has its own sovereignty, which means it does not uh, operate by the laws of man and the laws that govern everyone else. It operates by its own laws, uh, which is kind of a scary thing if you think about it. Um, so this is just showing his reign over everything on earth, um, even the law of man. Um, so the cross keys represent the, um, the keys of, of St. Peter, um, which is the keys to heaven and earth, which means this man is, he is bringing the divine to the material, which is also another reference to Taurus. He's making, um, he's making the principles of the divine, easily digestible for man, which is Taurus is a no bullshit sign. We like to cut everything out. We want to understand what the fuck you're trying to say. And we don't want to have to, you know, climb mountains to figure it the fuck out. Um, also Taurus is one of the most, um, opulent signs who enjoy the opulent side of life and the finest foods and the finest clothes and the finest surroundings. And if you look at the Pope's <laughs> They ain't poor bitch. They're the richest motherfuckers on earth. So there's also the reference to that as well. Um, let's see. Okay, so now we have the triple cross the, or the papal cross. It's the seal of the grand masters of the Templars. So there's that nod there from A.E. Weight to Freemasonry and all that. It, it also has to it's has to do with um, I think like the thirty third degree of the Scottish Rite, some, something like that. But there's definitely a nod to the the Masons and the Templars there. Um, the ancient origins of this cross trace back to, I don't know if I'm saying this right, it's Shinobis, an ancient Gnostic deity. And this is the symbol, the triple bar, or it's also seen as the triple S. It was put on amulets to protect the wearer from disease, poison, and death. And um, so it is a symbol of power. Now, one thing, oh, wait, before, before I get there, let's talk about the people in front of them. So this is about leading a flock and being the leader of groups and, um, and, and leading people in the right direction. Okay. Um, so let's see, we need a triple cross. Where was I going with that? I don't know. I lost my train of thought. That's great. Um, so, oh yeah, here it is. 
So in the tarot, the only two seated and crowned figures that hold their scepters in the left hand are going to be the Hierophant and the King of Cups. And I can't say this for sure. Anything that I say is stuff that I have researched. Some things I will say I am certain of because it is a spiritual knowing, but I don't, I can't say anything for a fact. I truly believe that these two hold their scepters in their left hand because in their right hand is what actually trumps the rulership of the material world, which is spirit. So in the Hierophant card, he's invoking spirit with his right hand. And in the King of Cups, spirit and, and divinity and consciousness flows through water is in his right hand. And it trumps the scepter, which is in the left hand. Now, um, there's always, um, there's a lot of information out there about how um, the ancients you know, always saw the left hand as the weaker side or the evil side. Um, that's why, again, the sign of benediction is always done with the right hand. Here we go. Right hand here, right hand there. None of this stuff is missed. That's why when we are right, we are right, quote unquote. Um, so that's where that comes from. Um, that's why, um, you know, when you're, you have the devil and the angel on your shoulders, the angel's always on the right, devil's on the left. It's really interesting concept okay so that was the imagery analysis for the hierophant now we're going to get to the emperor okay and the emperor is ruled by aries and aries aries is the ultimate ruler it is the um the i am which is the god self and I think this is interesting because the tar Taurus rules the second house, which is self-worth. So this is um, the, ma the masculine concept is knowing the self and invoking the power of the self, um, which I think is really, really cool. Um, so here, now that we're talking about scepters, he's got a scepter in his right hand. His scepter is an Ankh, which is... Um, let me get to my notes. Um, the Crux Ansada, it's been used, which is the key of life. It's also um, translates to the word life. Um, it also is known to be the symbol of spirit forced into matter. And again, he has spirit forced into matter in his right hand, trumping the world, which is material, in his left hand. So... This is very much a material card. When you get this card in your reading, it's a card of success. Um, four is always a pause. Um, it is a time to enjoy your successes. It's um, a plateau. Uh, but with any plateau, we know we still have to move forward. And we may have some ways down to go before we travel back up again. So... Um, the emperor is ruled, again, it's by Aries, and uh, you see the imagery of the ram here, very much so. And he, there's really not too much of the symbolism here, um, but when you get, again, when you get this card, um, it does mean there is, if it's inverted, it definitely means there's going to be a pause or a pause to get to where you're trying to go or it's it's a graduation of sorts um and the beard always the the last symbolism the beard always symbolizes wisdom and um time spent learning stuff and fairness um but and when you get the the hierophant card in a reading it's go it's going to deal with um people who are searching their spirituality um if it's inverted they're not looking in the right places they're not doing the right thing for themselves spiritually. They're not living their truth. Um, it also has to do, the Hierophant also has to do with leading people in the right direction, setting a good spiritual example for people. Um, one thing that I I think I'd like to note when I said that the Hierophant is my, my spiritual card, that's in our zodiac. Now, the natural zodiac, in our zodiac, May is the fifth month. 
but in the natural zodiac, May is the second month. So the zodiac starts in April. And when I, um, when I do my, my astrology, my spirit number is 11, which is a master, is a master teacher. So not because I want to be this master teacher, but because Jesuit priests and the ancient Greeks, some, they, they've all changed the way we view the zodiac and the way we view the times of year. Um, I think it was just to kind of throw us off so we cannot manipulate the energies of the universe the way that they can, um, the ruling class. Um, but I do believe that my natural birth or spirit number is not five, it's 11. But I also think it's really cool to look at your higher, your higher self and your material self in that way. So my, my spirit number would be 11, which would be justice. And um, they say that any um, number like 11, 22, and 33, if you get that number when you add your numbers down, you're, you're a very enlightened, um, very experienced soul in this incarnation. And you are here to definitely complete some type of spiritual mission. Um, so those were the breakdowns of the Hierophant and the Emperor. And I hope that this was informative. Um, but uh, always, 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 always in these cards, especially the Emperor, it's to remember that your spirit is what is more important. It's what's most divine. It's what's most holy over the material plane. And that's the essence. That's the esoteric meaning. The exoteric meaning would be to rule over matter, to win, to um, get that job, to finally secure that bag, to, you know, achieve the thing that you're trying to achieve. But um, it's more about wisdom and knowledge and ruling fairly and um, invoking that perfect sense of the male aspect of yourself, which would be fairness and um, patience definitely patience because four is the number of the pause but again I can go on forever um, I'm kind of thinking how I'm going to continue these tarot talks once I'm done the instructional series uh, there's just so much more that you can elaborate on it's it's endless because this is the book of life it says the book of the law and any witch anybody who's new to the occult this is the way to go Dabbling in magic will kind of let you learn things and ceremonial magic and all of that, but you don't, you won't understand the laws and the principles of those things until you understand the tarot. The tarot is the way to go. Um, I've gotten to where I am mentally, spiritually, physically because of the tarot, and it is one of the most sacred things, and it's right in front of your face. Um, they can show you, but they can't tell you. It's one of them things where you just have to unlock it and you have to keep studying it. And um, a little bit of time a day dedicated to reading about it, um, looking up stuff. Again, Corinne Kenner's book, um, Tarot and Astrology. And um, I just ordered another book, and I'll let you guys know how it is and what it is once I get into it a little bit. Um, but this was the Hierophant and the Emperor. And um, we're going to move on to... Um, the less personified cards now after this it's going to be more spiritual concepts um everything else will pretty much be single um single videos now following because we have the lover six and then we have the chariot so those are going to be interesting um imagery breakdowns and um i look forward to going further and delving further into the tarot with you guys thank you so much for listening to me ramble <laughs> thanks for tuning in i hope you're enjoying i hope you're learning like, comment, subscribe, share, and um, I'm looking forward to having a conversation with you guys. I hope you have a blessed day.